welcome everyone to our second. Uh, I'm now, Tamsin, you've now confused me whether it's coffee and key or key and coffee. What was it? What did we decide? Coffee and key. We said it, officially it's key and coffee. Key and coffee. Key and coffee. Key and coffee. So um, welcome uh, to the second one. This time um, we're going to have a chat through um, the uh, Connected Capabilities Fund, the IP Pragmatics uh, report that came out um, in mid-March, I think it was, uh, and Tamsin had put um, a blog on. So um, for those who don't know me, I'm Alistair Cameron. I'm a, a Director of Strategic Engagement with Praxis Oral. Uh, Tamsin, do you want to say hello? Yeah, I'm, so I'm Tamsin Mann, uh, Director of Policy and Communications at Praxis Oral. Okay, and so um, we were trying out a new format for this one. Last time we used Zoom meetings, this time we're using Zoom webinar. Um, so if, if you notice any difference, that's what, that, what might be causing it. Um, and you can give us your feedback on whether you prefer the previous version uh, or format, sorry, or, or this current one. This does allow us to manage attendees a bit easier. Um, than the last one did. Um, for those of you who came to the last one, thanks for coming back. Um, we'll do our best to make sure the quality <laughs> stays the same. Um, we are recording this session uh, in the hope that um, others might, who can't make it might be able to view it at a later date. Um, so uh, Connected Capabilities Fund, CCF for short, um, 100 million pounds um, channeled through Research England out to um, predominantly English. In fact, I think you have to be an English HEI to, to receive the funding, but there are a couple of Scottish and a Welsh partner involved in them. Um, and it seems it's set out to um, encourage collaboration between unis and their key activities. Um, the report that we've, we've had a look through is, was produced or commissioned by Research England, IP Pragmatics undertook it. Uh, so thanks to uh, Elaine and Rupert um, for that. Um, 18 projects, as I said, £100 million, involving 54 HEIs, um, most of them with at least three partners um, in each project. Projects all running for three years. I think most started April 2018 and they're due to complete March 2021. Um, so... Uh, that's a kind of a background on CCF. Um, so Tamsin, in your views, the CCF programme, what is it primarily set out to, to try and achieve? Well, I think it was, um, I think it was, a, it was part of Leo, the response to um, industrial strategy. So the industrial strategy was launched in 2017 and then there was various uplifts to Hyfe uh, in the following academic year. Um, and the CCF was, Part of that that kind of package that came in the wake of the industrial strategy um, and it and it does address you know that main ideas chapter of the industrial strategy about getting research out into external organizations but it also meets a lot of the that kind of people capacity uh, and place-based um, questions i suppose that that knowledge exchange can address and which are still really uh, pertinent today of course uh, so the range of projects um, is really important because they address knowledge exchange challenges in lots of lots of very different ways. Okay, so the, the this report's an interim review of the the program as a whole. I think the report suggests that um, each individual project will be evaluated um, at the end. But in terms of um, a, a midterm review. Um, what did you see in there as the, the kind of key findings or observations, recommendations that from IP Pragmatics? Well, I, I think the, the thing that struck me initially was that I just realised that I knew very little about the CCS. And that's, you know, speaking as somebody who's kind of at the heart of knowledge exchange activity and policy and discussions. And I, I, I mean, when I say I knew very little about them, I knew they were there because obviously practice oral has that acted as a, as a kind of showcase for, for many of the projects at conference. And we've provided a SIG so that there is a kind of meta connectivity around the projects. Um, but I, I wasn't aware of the individual projects and what they were achieving and the particular sectors they were addressing quite as much as I felt I should be. So initially the report was just very welcome because it really raised awareness of, of those different 18 projects and what they were achieving. Um, 
And then I realised that a lot of things that I'd either flagged on Twitter or noticed uh, and had flagged in my policy work uh, were actually a result of the CCFs. Um, and then when I looked at them more closely, um, it is, you know, they, they demonstrate a lot of the, the kind of things that we support in our policy anyway, that, that principle of diversity uh, in knowledge exchange modes and models, uh, the importance of people, um, connecting all these, you know, these projects together, that idea of uh, knowledge exchange as a, a, a kind of glue that, that, that can put, you know, the, the, the supply side and the demand side together and keep the wheels turning. Um, so I think they, they, they really reinforce lots of, lots of very positive things that we support in any case uh, and have potentially got lots of learning for us going forward as well. Yeah, so just for looking, you commented on the diversity of projects that have been funded. So uh, do you give me or give us an idea, or maybe a, a snapshot of a couple, a few of them that are, you know, the differences that, that we might not be aware of in terms of the projects that are going forward? Yeah, so the, there are two, the two that I knew about already were, perhaps unsurprisingly, one that's based out of Cambridge, the Ceres Agritech uh, project, um, which um, is obviously very sector based and demonstrates, you know, particular uh, need for, for knowledge exchange in that area and that's involving Cambridge but unusually you know stretching across the eastern region to up to Lincoln so that's a new new partnership I think for Cambridge University and that's good to see. I also knew about Micra which is the Midlands innovation um, around commercialization those those partners there who I think had probably had quite well established relationships and have, have built on those well established relationships to create um, uh, more capacity and capability, particularly around IP commercialization, which is one of the, which was a really key um, aim of the, of the project, I believe. And then a couple that I, I, I'm less, well, certainly one that I was very unfamiliar was with, which I feel slightly ashamed about, which is the Aspect Network, which was social sciences. Uh, given my own kind of pay professional background, you know, from a decade ago, I felt I should have known about this one. But I think it's, again, it was a, I think this was one of the newer, um, communities who got together very um, disciplinary based um, in, in contrast to being sector based um, and really thinking about how social sciences can benefit from this wave of funding into knowledge exchange and then um, the northern accelerator which is a really good example of um, a connecting capability fund which is addressing a place-based need so that's based up in Durham and Sunderland and is really looking at how that kind of a typical, if you like, left behind kind of area, very dependent on a, a small industry base, very few higher education institutions, and, um, you know, thinking about how they can attract more investment and make a, a higher profile of the skills and support that their universities can provide locally. Right. Okay. So, I mean, the, the project, or the, sorry, the report um, makes some suggestions about how the, um, the learnings are being um, transferred within the individual CCF partners and also CCF to CCF. Um, but I guess, I mean, you've hinted on it that as, as the connected person you are, that you weren't necessarily aware of everything that goes on. So um, what, you know, comments on the visibility of the programme to those outside? I mean, I think I said 54 HEIs are involved. So there's a good chance that um, if you're not involved, you probably know someone who is. Yeah. Um, but is that an area where an organisation like Praxis Oral could could help? Yeah, and uh, anybody who's read the report will know that this is, uh, you know, this was among the recommendations that IP Pragmatics suggested was that Praxis Oral could play a role in, I suppose, just giving more more oxygen to the successes and the outcomes of these projects, whether or not they, you know, they they carry, continue our, after this initial funding there's going to be learning from each and every one of them. Um, so I think often it is about, you know, I say this in our own organisation as well, it's sometimes about the packaging and the presentation. It's a bit like the catapults were before they had a kind of unified catapult uh, branding and, 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 you know, one stop where you could go and find out about all the different catapults. Somebody might find out about a CCF, but, you know, if you can go to one space and, and see the range of projects then it immediately has more of an impact, I think. So, so I think there's definitely something for Praxis to do around there. 
but also I think for us to learn from the different ways in which the, the CCFs are, are tackling you know, training, professional development, uh, how they're tackling some of the internal issues within HEIs around collaboration and how we, how we bring some of those skills back into our core training, but how we also mm. acknowledge that there are sector-based and discipline-specific training that are, you know, they can just do uh, alongside the core, those core skills that we provide. And that's, that's a nice model that we can, we can look to. Yeah. I mean, there is, I mean, I guess one of the, the main drivers behind the program is to make the, you know, the, the, um, inferred friction of doing KED as small as possible. And certainly the, um, the key objectives around sharing key processes, sharing best key practice and, and access to cross HEI capabilities, they're all uh, within the remit of our, our members and, and our practitioners. Um, so just thinking, going on to the actual, um, the outputs of the, of the learnings that are coming out of the report, um, the, and I guess how we, well, doing this helps us share them. The, there were a couple that um, jumped out to me as um, not necessarily that surprising. Uh, so a number of uh, partnerships had uh, indicated difficulty in getting SME interaction. Um, I think those of us who, who try and engage <laughs> SMEs uh, on a daily basis yeah. find that. Um, so that's not necessarily a surprise. Uh, and the other uh, comment was the... Uh, well, <laughs> the learning was how to manage oversubscribed proof of concept funds. So I guess um, another uh, um, relatively uh, common issue with uh, funds helping um, around proof of concept and then being oversubscribed. So um, yeah, those two stuck out for me. For you, Tamsin. Well, I think I think there was some. So that I had I've noted down three, and it's it, it kind of relates to. Um, so in, when I wrote my blog, uh, which is still on the website, if anybody hasn't read that, I, uh, I, at the time I'd been reading um, something else possibly that had come out of um, UCL's innovation uh, unit about mi moonshots and mis being moonshots and mission led. And I, and I felt that some of the issues that the CCS were facing when they first set up were related to whether they were kind of mission led or moonshots. And, and it was around governance. Some of those... Um, issues around governance, uh, I think helped with some of the, to, um, to resolve some of that friction, uh, because clearly if you haven't, you know, just like with, a, with when new businesses are collaborating together, the, um, the internal mechanics of how you set up a collaboration uh, are, are slower the first time you do it. So I think, you know, speaking to a couple of the CCF um, leaders and, and people who are involved in them, it was clear that internal processes, that research administration that is often held up as a potential barrier to collaboration, those processes had improved because there was a, a, a desire and a need to get this, these projects up and running as quickly as possible. And so, you know, perhaps different ways of being founding about setting up collaborations that hadn't been tried before. And the other point about the governance is that, again, because this was dedicated um, funding for these projects, they're pretty high profile because they're linked to industrial strategy um, and for, for some uh, of the CCS, a very new way of working. So to push knowledge exchange up that kind of management um, attention spectrum, which is exactly what the KE Concordat, which we were talking about last week, uh, wants, wants to happen with knowledge exchange, pushing it up uh, the, the leadership uh, ranks, I suppose, and, and making it something that's more valued by HEI leadership. Um, the, the other thing that I noticed, and uh, this was particularly in, mentioned in the Bloomsbury set CCF, was about uh, researcher engagement and where some researchers were, were taking more of a lead in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that we would say, might say is a typical K professional kind of role. So the, that, that distinction between being a researcher and being a K professional is becoming more blurred, which I think is really healthy for knowledge exchange generally. Because as soon as you stop making people feel like they have to kind of switch mode and move, do a different kind of activity on the research side, I think you're going to get them more inclined to just do it as a, you know, as part of their normal business. Um, and then the K professional's job is to frame it so that it can it can be reported as part of this project. Um, so I think those kind of inter you know almost the internal processes 
are just as interesting learning outcomes as some of the external you know mechanisms of collaboration with external organizations okay um, i'm just i'm i'm drawn to the chat and, and <laughs> Alex comment that i've been misrepresenting the program from the, the start of the time. webinar so so apologies to to joe and colleagues at research england and um, of course it is the connecting capability fund not the connected capabilities fund as i think i said um so thanks joe for uh, point that out. <laughs> that's me that's i'll not be getting asked back um so um if we if we turn to what happens next and, and the report does um raise some of the concerns from the the partnerships around uh, sustainability um, and even halfway through they're starting to look um and think that the time scales of three-year program might not be enough to allow these um partnerships to develop um, a sustainable model that would have uh, PVCs and VCs um, saying that yeah we should continue. Um, what, what do you? What's your feeling on that, Tamsin? I, I mean, I did. Um, I think three years is quite a short time, particularly if you're if you're not mission ready. If you're doing a moonshot and you're just setting up something mm -hmm. new, uh, you've got to recruit people, which I know some of the CCFs uh, found difficult just because of the nature of their what the, the, you know the project they were tackling. Uh, but also, you know, in, in some cases, I think because of where they were, what the region they were based in or, or representing, that you just found it more difficult to find the right kind of people, the right kind of K professionals to do the job they needed to do. Um, so that's one thing. So I think some of them have, you know, taken longer to set up and get up and running. Um, and, you know, we all know how, how you know, hmm. the timer quickly ticks through when you're in that recruitment and setup phase. Um, so, and I, I, but I think it depends, you know, it comes back to how much you can demonstrate internal value, I suppose. Um, HEIs have had to, uh, you know, are already supporting these projects with additional funding and additional, you know, resource, whether that's in kind or, or as actual money. And some of the external partners are putting money into these as well. So it's not totally dependent on a specific CCF fund, as I understand it. Uh, we've got slightly larger HIFE allocations next year, so maybe activity that is coming through the CCS will, you know, be beneficial in terms of that allocation model anyway. Um, so there are, you know, you can see how already you're getting a slightly more uh, sustainable model coming in, but there's no doubt about it that, that many of them will need to find out their own way of generating income. Um, I do think that, you know, I, I spoke to Julia Black at the LSE because uh, about the aspect CCF in particular, uh, and it was clear that they'd, you know, one of these, it was a, they're a bit more of a moonshot model, I suppose, doing something quite different. Um, but they felt that because they'd, they'd kind of, particularly with their training, which they, I believe they only started offering relatively recently, they've already had to move to a model of doing everything online uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis. So they felt they were quite uh, kind of, certainly, as far as the immediate future goes, quite future proof, because they demonstrated that they could do that training online right from the word go. And I think if you're not trying to move people online from an offline setting like Praxis Oral is, it's easier to start something online straight away and you build a community in a different way. So, you know, there's, there's different um, ways that you can argue for impact, I think. And if you can argue that, you know, because the CCFs are collaborative, they're distributed, and they're addressing um, things that are important to local areas maybe, then you're, you're ticking lots of different boxes, maybe in ways that weren't anticipated back in 2017, 18, when funding was given out, but are appropriate for the situation that we find ourselves in now and the kind of KE challenges that we're gonna to have to address. Yeah, yeah. And I guess one of the, the, when I flick back through the report, one of the interesting things again, to see was that there was a large number of um, of these uh, partnerships funded outside what we would say the classic kind of golden triangle. So yeah. really having yeah. in that um, hitting those regional um, buttons um, and and great to see. Um, okay, well we're we're kind of rapidly well I'm rapidly drawing to the end of my cup of coffee. So um, <laughs> I guess we um, we might um, maybe open it out and see if there's any questions um, out there. Um, we can do this um, a number of ways. The, the, maybe the, well, you can submit a question through the Q&A um, if you want. Um, we may or may not have enough time to get through them depending on the volume. Or um, you can simply raise your hand by clicking the raise hand button 
um, and we'll come to you and you can ask your question in person. We can't um, turn on people's videos, but we, we would be looking to hear from you. So your audio uh, would, need to, uh, would need to be able to, to work and let us hear you. So if anybody wants to ask a question um, on um, audio, then um, raise your hand um, and we'll try and come to you. Otherwise, um, if you've got a question, you can um, stick it in the, the Q&A by hitting the Q&A button. And, and I think we know that Joe Allett, who's the CCF project manager at Research England, I believe is in the audience. So Joe, if you do want to say anything, that if I've got anything wrong, then it's, you know, I'm very happy to be corrected or have your perspective on the report as well. That'd be, that'd be interesting to hear. Yeah, you, you can come on and chastise me for incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm correctly naming your fund. Um, well, uh, so I've noticed there's um, the Joe's there. So why don't um, can I ask? Can can we turn Joe's mic on? That's Joe Allett, and um, and let's. Hi, Hi Joe. Um, so apologies to start off with. Um, that's all, that's all my fault, not Tamsin's at all. Um, <laughs> but it's um, just any any comments from you on the the report. You might want to just make sure everybody knows. And who you are and your association with the report. Um, so I'm, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm the um, senior, senior policy advisor at uh, Research England. I've been working on the CCF since we wrote the, uh, or since we wrote the policy, to be quite honest, um, before the competition went out. And um, I manage and monitor all of the projects. Um, yeah, I, I think this has been a really interesting chat. It's interesting to hear your views on on that report. It's um, nice to hear that it's uh, it's been read quite positively. We were really pleased with it, and um, it's really great to have that extra information about the progress of the projects. Um, at the moment, I'm trying. I'm looking to get some case studies as well mm -hmm. together, so you'll you'll see some more information come out soon, hopefully, um, on the Research England website for some of those specific things that they're all doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Thanks, Joe. Um, there's another, um, there's a question come in through Danielle Miles. Um, is there anything the CCF projects can do to help Praxis Oral in raising our profile? Um, so I presume they're involved in a, a CCF. I guess we've, we've kind of touched on that. Um, the idea of having some sort of, um, you know, an area where, um, with a bit of a, an overview of the CCF program and then being able to go into um, the projects um, seems like, I guess, a conversation for us to have with Research England. Um, and the, the interesting thing, if you take time to look at the report, it does kind of break it down into which each uh, funded area, what they're, what they're kind of, they're trying to tackle, what areas they're looking at. So it does help you if you were looking for specific expertise uh, or insights into an area, then you would know which project uh, to go. So that um, in itself in the report is, is useful. Yeah, and I, I know that at conference we were, you know, we had, the intention had been to have the CCFs talk, you know, many of many of the projects presenting at conference and perhaps having a, you know, a CCF uh, networking area. So that's something that we'll keep, still keep in mind for next year, even though I guess the projects, you know, will have come to an end by that point. So maybe that's something that we should think of for later this year, if we, if we are able to get together again, or thinking of a different way to do that um, as the end of the project's approaches, but yeah. Okay, um, any other questions, um, either on the Q&A or MD want to stick their hand up? I can see um, a question from Lisa Gibbs on the, on the chat. And I, Lisa, I would say, um, if you're, if you're in a CCF, then you should be able to join the CCF SIG um, or the, the online group that is in our new online community. And that is a very good question to put that online community there. Um, so Lisa just asked a question about student and graduate initiatives. Um, I think right. using that dedicated discussion group would be a really way for, good way for the CCFs, you know, anybody who's involved across the projects to, um, to communicate with each other. That could be quite a powerful tool, I think. Okay, and we've got uh, David Hartley stuck his hand up. Um, so uh, if we can unmute David. David, hi. 
Hi there. Hi. Thanks very much for the discussion so far. Uh, David from Oxford Brooks. I was struck by the, the um, difference between the projects that were about having impact on KE practice and the other kinds of projects which got together through collaboration to address a specific uh, sectoral opportunity or challenge. Um, perhaps I could ask Joe really as to whether there was a, a view as to whether impact on KE pr uh, practice was to be prioritized compared with actual uh, sector impact. Uh, okay, thanks David. Joe, your mic's on if, you, if you're happy to answer. I feel like a, a middleman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I'm in a better position to answer this than either of you two. Um, I, there isn't a particular focus um, to, to look at practice over um, over anything else. We, we like the fact that they're all so varied. We just challenged everyone to, to do whatever KE they wanted to do that was, the, you know, in the collaborations they wanted to do. I think that, yeah, and I think that's where, you know, the, I see a role for Praxis Oral is definitely drawing, you know, drawing out that KE practitioner, KE practice specific learning. I suspect the sector based ones, even if they weren't, you know, deliberately addressing KE practice will have learnt you know, useful things about K practice in, in a, maybe in a, with a sector specific um, angle on it that, that will, will be useful in our kind of core, in that core learning that, that I spoke about. Um, okay, well, we are rapidly running out of time. Um, so um, I guess any final comments from you, Tamsin? Uh, no, I would just say, you know, if, if you haven't had a chance to read the report, do read it um, and go and find out more about the CCS because I think they're a really, been a really positive uh, contribution to, to all our work and, and I've really certainly enjoyed finding out more about the ones I didn't know so well. So. Okay, thanks Tamsin. Um, well, I'll certainly, I'll, um, I'll stick to the, uh, the report um, up on the Praxis Oral online community um, and um, we'll start a discussion thread just like we did uh, last week. Um, so if there's any other questions or comments, then um, you can um, post them in there and we'll, uh, we'll try and get back to you. Um, thanks so much uh, for uh, spending half an hour with us um, on the Connecting Capability Fund. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be etched in my mind now. Um, we will let you know, we've had some suggestions through about a topic potentially for next week. So Tams and I will have a chat. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll come out to you on what that's going to be. So look out for that um, either online, uh, on social media or in your inbox, uh, an email probably Monday or Pierre. Uh, okay, thanks again. Thanks, Tamsin. Okay, no problem. See you all. Bye. Bye.